Well, I, I think it, it's been a strange campaign, partly because it's been through the summer, and I think most people direct their attention elsewhere. So, I mean, I, I don't know how much, with the excitement of the end of Boris Johnson, so to speak, the campaign, I don't think, has been followed in any great depth. And also, I think that there's been a slight um, lack of interest near the end of the campaign, given that we're pretty certain that Liz Truss is going to win it. And uh, if, if the opinion pollings and the feelings that one gets for people that have had uh, a vote in this um, it, it is right, it looks as if it's Liz Truss. Because on the one hand, this is a very, very strange thing, isn't it? Is that, that we are going to have a new prime minister. We're going to have a new government based upon it, possibly a new policy direction. Uh, and we haven't been involved in choosing that. So when I say we here, unless you are a member of the Conservative Party, you have not had a choice um, in, in, in um, choosing the new prime minister. That said, this is actually far more normal than it is unnormal in the sense that the, the, the last prime minister who gained power for the first time by winning an overall majority in the House of Commons was Tony Blair. Uh, the, the, the last prime minister to become prime minister by winning a general election and leave office by losing an election was Ted Heath. So actual, in actual fact, this sort of transition of power is, is, is the norm in British politics. Uh, so, it, you know, it's, it's been uh, a, a funny campaign. I suppose what's dominated the campaign as it has dominated the news, and I suspect the thoughts of most people around the country is the cost of living crisis and gas prices going in uh, and the response to that. And here we've seen um, between Sunak and Truss quite a, um, a different response. Truss, if she is planning any direct aid to individual consumers, she hasn't let on. She's, she's been, it, Truss's campaign has been along the lines of we need tax cuts. And tax cuts, and this is something which often rings true with Conservative supporters, tax cuts are the best way to deal uh, with, uh, with the fuel crisis and, and the spending crisis. And if she is planning uh, to make direct payments to individuals to help with fuel bills and to help with inflation and so on and so forth. She's keeping her cards very close to her chest on that. Sunak, on the other hand, has branded tax cuts as immediately now as being uh, fiscally irresponsible and has suggested that individuals are going to need help, not just people on the, the poorest level, but given the rate of inflation and given the, the, the potential price hike, uh, for gas and electricity prices that, that there's going to be having to have payments across the board. So that, for me, has been the key difference between the, the two candidates. Uh, there's also uh, perhaps people are less interested in the personnel of politics, but, you know, you've had certain sort of people jump ship and join Liz Trust, but also um, you know, Liz Truss might potentially bring Boris Johnson into a cabinet. Rishi Sunak has ruled that out. Michael Gove is almost certainly not going to serve under Liz Truss and has backed Rishi Sunak. So there's been that political manoeuvring as well. But it seems to me the, the central element of what I think has been an entirely uninspiring campaign uh, has been that different set of approaches to the cost of living crisis. And, um, and, and inflation and the hike in gas and electricity prices. OK, and as you say, all the polls are suggesting that it is going to be Liz Truss. Um, I don't want to sort of assume this, but if, if it is, what, why do you think that is? What do you think it is about her that has um, caught the imagination of the Tory membership? Well, I, I think that there's a number of factors at play here. The first is, is, is that the policy push of tax cuts is, is definitely one that, that, that rings true of, of hardcore Conservative supporters, uh, uh, which who regard 
um, lower taxes as being a, a, a moral and fiscally vital element of government. So you have the sort of policy area there. Also, Rishi Sunak, if, if this had been held a year ago, I suspect Rishi Sunak would have stormed home. Um, but, but there's there's two, uh, three things which have happened, perhaps which have um, um, been problematic for Rishi Sunak. Uh, firstly, is the issues around the, his fiscal affairs and the non-dom status of his wife, which um, which I think was a, um, a, a a problematic element. This, this this notion that the person who is in charge of economic policy for the country, uh, his family, were not having the same tax arrangements as the rest of us. So there was that. There was second, of course, Rishi Sunak did receive a fixed penalty notice under party gate as well, despite saying that he hadn't been at a party. He had um, a fixed penalty notice. And, and, and thirdly, Rishi Sunak has, by hardcore Boris Johnson supporters, it's been suggested that it was him who knifed Boris Johnson in the back, it, it, you know, um, um, that by resigning as Chancellor, uh, which started that wave of resignations, that it, it was him who turned against Boris Johnson. Because this is the thing. Um, the same polls which have put Liz Truss in a comfortable lead in the leadership uh, election um, have also said that the majority of Conservative Party members would still want Boris Johnson to be in charge. Boris Johnson has a lot of support within Conservative Party members. Liz Truss has been unproblematically um, a Boris Johnson supporter. Um, she has left the door open for Boris Johnson perhaps to come into the cabinet, whether he would want that or not is another issue altogether. Whereas Sunak has, you know, it's been suggested that he knifed Boris Johnson in the back. And secondly, it's been, um, he's, he's ruled out Boris Johnson coming in the cabinet thinking that they need a fresh start uh, for the new challenges ahead. So, um, that, so I think that there are a number of different factors there which, which push towards trust being supported by the Conservative Party membership. Okay, so um, the voting's finished. Um, in a few days' time, one of them will be the new Prime Minister. Just talk us through exactly what happens and a little bit about the processes and the, the pomp and ceremony that happens over the next few days. So exactly how do we get a new Prime Minister, what's what's going to happen in the coming days? Well, of course, constitutionally speaking, the um, the Prime Minister is invited to a former government by the Queen. Uh, that that's 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 what happens, and the um, uh, the convention is, is the Queen will ask the person who can command a majority in the House of Commons. So, uh, effectively speaking, we, we do, of course, have a Prime Minister, and that Prime Minister is still Boris Johnson. Um, I, I understand, and, 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 and my dates could be a smidgen off here, but on, on the 5th of September, Boris Johnson will go and see the Queen. I believe that this might be in Scotland, in Balmoral, uh, rather than in Buckingham Palace, and formally resign. And then the following day, uh, it's likely that the Queen will invite whomsoever wins the uh, leadership election, who can show uh, that they have... They can command a majority in the House of Commons because they're the leader of a party which has an overall majority in the House of Commons and that they will be invited to form a government. Then, then that's it for the pomp and ceremony, to be honest with you, because then government gets real. Um, that the winner will have to pick a cabinet and there are incumbents, some of which will stay, some of which will go. Uh, so there'll be a personnel uh, shuffle there. And then there is the little problem of record high inflation, gas prices, um, uh, and so on and so forth, which they had to deal with them. So, you know, the, 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 the new prime minister is really going to have to hit the ground running, if you pardon that cliche, that there are a lot of pressing problems. And indeed, 
one could perhaps argue that because of this change of government that's happened and the fact that Boris Johnson has ruled out any change in policy towards helping with gas and electricity prices, leaving that to the, the new prime minister, means that it's going to come quite late in the day, uh, the, these changes. So I think Truss is going to have an emergency budget relatively soon into uh, a premiership if, if she were elected. So, you know, the pomp and ceremony is brief. Then governance gets real. OK, and um, so just talk us through then what the new prime minister is going to face in the next few weeks and months. Obviously, you mentioned probably the, the biggest thing there. Um, what what other things are going to be in the new prime minister's in tray that they're going to have to get a grip of um, over the next few months? Well, uh, other than, of course, the... Um... Uh, the fiscal issues which face us. You've got the ongoing um, uh, conflict in Ukraine uh, and, and the nature of support there. But there are still a number of issues to thrash out with regards to the European Union, specifically around about uh, Northern Ireland. Um, and um, Liz Truss has also suggested that, that she will bring about changes in education policy within universities and so on and so forth. But we, we can't look beyond the economic issues because th this is the thing um if you cast your mind back to the last election uh in 2019 uh it was very much focused around about brexit and it was a, a slightly um uh ill in untypical uh general election because brexit and and getting it done was the key um issue the new prime minister is going to have a general election in a couple of years. Overwhelmingly, over time, what wins or loses general elections is the economy. Uh, so the new prime minister coming in, if they are only to be prime minister, if sorry, if they're going to be prime minister for more uh, than two years, then they're going to have to fix the economy. People, when they're feeling comfortable financially, tend to vote for incumbency when they're feeling worried about the economy, tend to vote for the opposition. Um, and bearing in mind the very large majority that Boris Johnson secured in 2019, the new prime minister, looking at opinion polls and so on and so forth, is, is not going to have much of a honeymoon um, if they're to stay in, in power post the general election, which will be in about two and a bit years. <laughs> 